Conley in the backyard at 30th Place, late summer of 1943. The asters blooming behind her. Lyndon is back in the House of Representatives. John is an officer in the Navy, sighting objects on radar somewhere out in the Pacific. Nellie is living at Woodley Park Towers in our old apartment. She and Kathleen came over and spent a lot of time with us. This must have been about September. Linda Bird was going to be born the next March. There's Kathleen on the back porch. How we did love that place. Nellie holding her right across the fence from Dr. Reed. The backyard was a good place to put a child down on a pallet or in a playpen. While we worked in our garden, we had the best 30-foot square garden in the whole wide world all during the war. If the world was in the grip of tragedy, we didn't know it. We were too busy. Lyndon was hard at work on the Naval Affairs Committee, a rather frequent caller at the White House, sometime for breakfast with FDR. Nellie was probably lonely. But there was a constant stream of young officers, young servicemen, would come by and spend the night on the third floor of 30th Place, which is just really like an attic then. Ray Roberts, Jake Pickle, time to take Kathleen home. And there's the Terry's. We used to have the best summer dinners out there. Black-eyed peas, fresh from the garden, tomatoes and okra. Zephyr could fix them so good. Turnip greens. Cornbread and buttermilk. Speaker Rabin was a frequent visitor, and Bill Deason, who worked in the Bureau of Personnel, was with us a lot. Now it's fall in Washington. Nothing has endeared this country more to me than the gorgeous coloring of fall foliage. I walked a lot that fall. Here we are at Pierce Mill. I think Bill Deason was with me that day. Pierce Mill was restored by Mr. Ickes. It's one of the charms of Rock Creek Park. Look at that gorgeous maple. I think this must be from either Taft Bridge or the Calvert Street Bridge. Walks and movies were one of my joys that fall. Bill Deason was the widow's friend, dividing his time between Nellie and me. Yes, look at this view. Uh, from Calvert Street Bridge. I'm sure Bill must have been going with me and helping me take these. There he is, working in our yard. There's young officer John Conley, home on leave, with his little daughter. Look how thin, how young he looks. In the background, the Washington Monument. Up the other way is the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. That was a fountain with a perfect view of the city below us. Dogwood is as lovely in the fall as it is in the spring. The Jefferson Memorial, newly completed, I believe, and now it seems like it's been there forever. And 
there's Jefferson himself, my favorite of all the founding fathers. Must have been a gray day in the fall. Oh, what gorgeous coloring. But the winds of winter are beginning to blow. And there's Kathleen. They were living in our apartment at 224 Woodley Park Towers. Snowsuit weather. Kathleen walking out the front door with Nellie. What a chore to get those children into them and out of them. Seems like no sooner did you get them outdoors than they needed to go back in. Sam Houston's wife, Albertine, and their two children come to see us. Sam and Josepha Roxanne. She was Mrs. Johnson's joy. She was her first grandchild. Kathleen, barely toddling, she was about 10, about 12. Perhaps she was a year old at this time. We had a convertible all during the war. There it is, a Buick. Lyndon used to always tell me that it was, it was better business to trade them in every year. I used to want to keep them year after year. Finally came the war. We had to keep it for four years. I found out then some of the difficulties that happen when a car gets old. Sam Houston comes, and that makes a family group. He and his wife and their two children. A couple of years later, that pink snowsuit came back into our lives when Albertine gave it to Linda Bird. Family portrait. Kathleen's first birthday. I'm not sure who the children were that were her guests. Probably a little Whirly, a little Nichols, a little Miller. Nellie was living in 224 Woodley Park Towers, the favorite of all the six or so apartments that Lyndon and I had during our years before we bought a house. Bill Deason, the widow's friend, was living there with her, much to the amazement of the elevator operators who would see him come down and go out and return, and then John come home on leave occasionally every few months. Lennon and I and Nellie and John and Bill laughed at that perplexity. If Nellie was lonely, she was gay about it. And Kathleen was keeping her busy. We were living in the midst of one of the world's most strenuous times, but we were young and we were happy. And it was about one month before Linda Bird was born. The Naval Affairs Committee was Lyndon's main engrossing business those days. And the speaker, one of our most constant companions, There's Bill. How 
I know it. Nellie and I were when he finally got married. He just felt like he deserted us. 